This is question two of the 2019 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert paper. It is made up of two parts, A and B, and involves complex numbers. As you can see on the right part, we have a graph we need to um, plot our answers onto. I'll be attempting to draw that on the board, but mine won't be as neat as you see here. Also, if you do not have the copy of this question yourself, if you look in the description below, there will be a link to an image of it, you can walk from that. Okay, here I have on the board, I've jotted down all the relevant uh, information. They gave us Z1 is equal to two plus uh, I, and they've, they're they asking us about Z2. And they tell us Z2 is equal to two times Z1. Lots of students get very confused because these are Zs. They work just like uh, Xs we've been using all this time. We just tend to use Z when we're dealing with complex numbers. Okay, so let's start answering this. They ask us to find Z2 and to plot it on the diagram. Well, they tell us Z2 is equal to. So we can just uh, copy this down. Z2 equal to. Instead of Z1, we fill in what we know Z1 to be. We know Z1 is equal to 2 plus i. So where I see a Z1, I fill this new answer in. And then I just um, multiply this out. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is 2i. So z2 is equal to 4 plus 2i. That's the answer, except we just need to draw it. We go to the real part, 4, and this is the real axis, and this is an imaginary axis. We go to the real part, 4, and we go to the imaginary part, plus 2. And where did they meet? They meet about here. I recommend you use a ruler with a pencil to get a rough line and a rough line here and to see where they where they meet. I Unfortunately, I'm gonna be fairly inaccurate in my drawing. Okay, and then just put in Z2. Help the examiner, tell them what it is, Z2 is there. All right, so that's part one. Let's do part two. Part two, there's no work to do. You just need to know the answer. They tell us that Z1 with a little bar on top of it, a little line on top of it, is the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of Z1. Write it down, write down the answer and plot it. So you are required to know what this is equal to. The complex conjugate of Z1 is two minus I. It is, we change the sign of the imaginary part. Not the middle sign, not the one of the two signs, the sign that's in front of the imaginary part. In this case, the imaginary part is one eye. We change the sign in front of that. That is the answer. Then they require us to draw this on the board. Once again, we go to the real part and the imaginary part. That is roughly here. Again, use a ruler, use a pencil for these lines, and then with a biro or just a still use a pencil, a nice big dot. Okay, show that, don't hide, don't rub out these lines afterwards, show the examiner how you got your work. Okay, so that's the answer to part two. Part three asks us to investigate whether Z, Z2, the modulus of Z2 is equal to the modulus of Z1 plus Z1's complex conjugate. So when, what do they mean by investigate? There's two ways to really think about this. You could just find the answer to this part, then find the answer to this part, and you're being asked to investigate, do they equal? They say they equal. We're meant to investigate that. The other way, the way I'll do here, is we just keep this one line all together, and we try and fill it all out until we get to a point where we find out one equals one. That means it's true, it must be true. We know one equals one. Or maybe we'd find seven equals four. That must be false. We find something's true or something's false. I don't know at the moment, but we can investigate. And we'll investigate that by filling in some of these things we do know. Z2, four plus two i. These modulus, we don't know what these are yet. We'll talk about that in a moment. Well. I know what they are, and hopefully a lot of you do, but we will talk about what they mean in a moment. Z1 is 2 plus uh, I, plus the complex conjugate, plus 
2 minus i. This is, let's put a bracket around this just to be careful. They're, they're, these brackets aren't going to matter, but sometimes they do. If, there was, if this, this sign was a minus, that would be important. You could, um, you could lose your sign here or there. So let me clean this up. We have z plus 2i is equal to... So the brackets don't matter. It's 2 plus 2 is 4. i minus i is 0. So we're just left with this here. Already, I, I think um, we could... We, no, you'd need to write a bit of English to explain why you know this is wrong. So let's continue on and expand out these modulus here. So what is the modulus? I rather, I rather looking at the modulus in a picture, but there's also a, a, a formula for it. But really in a picture, so this is Z2, in a picture, what that means is it's how far that is from the center of the circle. Sorry, the center of um, the argon diagram to the origin, to zero, zero. So how far is this away? That means this as well. So 4. There's 4 here. How far away is 4 from this one? That one's nice and easy. The answer to this is just 4. But let's do this one out. Um, how I will do it is to draw a little triangle. This triangle here. Which is 4 along. How tall is this? It is too tall. So what I'm asking is, what is this distance? And is this distance equal to this distance? Hopefully you can already see, of course it's not. This distance cannot equal this distance. This distance, if we, from a drawing, we can say it's clearly bigger. That would be enough. If you want to write a little explanation about that, that would be enough. This clearly does not equal this. But a little more is this length here is four squared plus two squared square root. That's Pythagoras theorem. This is equal to the square root of the other two sides squared. Which, um, 4 squared is 16, plus 2 squared is 4. 16 plus 4 is the square root of 20. Um, equals the square root of 20. So let me just rub this bit out here. So that is what the modulus is here. Now you don't need to remember that. Another way to do it is simply the modulus means of a complex number means 4 squared plus 2 squared square root. But that's, what I, that's why it means that. It's from this Pythagoras theorem. Equals 4. Is this true? Square root of 20 equals 4. Is that true? No, it is not true. Square root of um, 16 is equal to 4. So the square root of 20 does not equal 4. Put it in the calculator, see what it tells you. Should tell you it equals 4.3, 4.4, I don't know, I'm guessing. But it certainly does not equal 4. That's, that's your answer. You have investigated this. Um, at the end, I would like to see something like, um, therefore, so you can write that in English, therefore, or you can write three dots, Z2, the modulus of Z2 does not. So you, I think it's probably good to write this in English for a lot of students. Does not um, or does not equal um, Z1 plus Z1 bar, the modulus of that. Something like that. Or in maths, you can just write Z2 does not equal. Put a line through it. Z1 plus Z1 bar. Okay. Well, really, you just need to know how to do modulus. If you just do this part, forget all this. If you do this part here, that will be your full marks. You need to know how to do the modulus of a number. The modulus of this number is the square root of 20. The modulus of this number is, is easy. It's just the absolute value. It's just 4. four the square root of 4 squared. It's just 4. So, and, and the investigation tells me this does not equal this. We're done. I'll rub this out and we'll do part B. So here is B. So they give us Z1 again and they tell us this is a solution to this equation. This is a solution to this equation. Really what they're asking you there is, what does that mean? So what does that English line mean? And a lot of your maths exam is going to come down to understanding what the sentence means. So X1 is a solution to this. That means if I put X1 in 
for Z here. Sorry, I keep saying X1 there. My apologies. Z1. Z1. Z1, if we put that in for Z, we will get equal zero. That's what it's saying. Or to put that another way, Z squared, uh, some Z squared minus 4Z plus 3 equals zero. Anything that goes into these two points and equals zero still is a solution. They tell us Z1 can go in here. They're telling us that Z 2 plus i, 2 plus i can go in here. That's what they're telling us, or what they're asking us really, are they? Um, show, they're asking us to show this. That if we put this in here, we will get zero. So that's what they're asking us to do. Put it in here, and let's see what we get. Let's multiply this out. 2 plus i squared is 2 plus i times 2 plus i minus 4 times 2 plus i plus 5 equals 0. Well, we're, we're going to test that. At the end of this, if we get 0 equals 0, we've shown that it does work. If we get 5 equals 0, we've shown it doesn't work. Now, we know it does because how they phrase questions in the exam is show that means it is right. We expect to get 0 equals 0 at the end here. So let's stay working. 2 times 2, we're multiplying all this out. 2 by 2, 2 by i, i by 2, and i by i. So 2 by 2 is 4, 2 by i is 2i, i by 2 is 2i, i by i is i squared, minus 4 by 2 is minus, 4 by 2 is 8, minus 4 by i is 4i, and plus 5, do not lose this minus, by the way, this minus was the minus 4. There's not just one minus, minus 4 was minus. The minus 4 touches both these guys. And um, equals 0, we'll see. Okay, let's uh, clean some of this up. We'll get, um, let's get all the numbers together. 4 is a normal number, 8 is a normal number, and 5 is a normal number. Put it in a calculator. If you're not good at doing this in your head, Put it in a calculator. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 minus 8 is 1. We'll put 4 minus 8 plus 5 in a calculator. You will get 1. Okay, let's put all the i's together. The, well, the singular i's. 2i, 2i, and minus 4i. So that's 2 plus 2 minus 4. Again, if you're not good at doing this in your head, put it in a calculator. You'll get 0 as your answer. They're gone. There's, uh, there's nothing left. 2i plus 2i minus 4i. There's nothing. Um, and what's left? There's this guy here. i squared. So plus i squared equals 0 is still there. Let's see if this is true. What's i squared equal? Something we should always remember. Do they tell us in the question? Um, yeah, they do. They usually tell us in complex number questions that i squared equals something, but it's not something you should forget. 1 plus i squared is minus 1. So instead of writing i squared, you can write minus 1. So what have we got here? We have, well, plus by a minus is a minus. And yes, 1 minus 1 does equal 0. 0 equals 0. This is true. We have shown that this is true, which is what they asked us to do. All right, that is question 2 of the Leave Cert. If you have any questions, Put them in the comments below. I will get back to you as quickly as I can and try and help you out. Until next time, have a good one.